And so we begin this creature feature. With a Jeepers Creepers filming location. Welcome back to 180th Southwest Avenue in Dunellen, Florida. This road is where they film 90% of Jeepers Creepers. And next year, the Creeper will return because every 23 years, he comes out and feeds. Actually, 23 years ago, this summer, they were filming the movie back in 2000. So Chris the girl, it's your first time at the Jeepers Creepers filming location. What do you think? It's pretty. It's beautiful out here, right? Yeah, it is. I can definitely see why they chose this area. For a horror film. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect place to stop before going to a horror convention. Yes. Which is only 14 minutes away from here. Is that the creeper coming? No. That way. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. I am Tampa J. This is Chris the Girl. Beautiful Chris the Girl. Us together, we love horror conventions and we're heading back to Spookala, a very new horror convention and pretty immaculate. A lot of awesome things you will see today. Celebrities, overload, and panels. The Hardy Boys will be out here if you like wrestling. Also Seth Green, The Conjuring, Halloween 3, Friends, all kinds of things. This is my third horror convention in less than three weeks and there's more coming. And also late last night, I was up. We're late because I was up last night filming a horror movie. I wasn't filming it myself, I was actually acting. I did my first on screen, my on screen debut. I filmed that last night uh, on set south of Tampa. So I'm very tired, but I've got lots of energy. I'm with this beautiful girl. We love horror conventions. And what are you most looking forward to today, Chris the girl? Halloween three. Halloween three? Yes. We'll have to get that on camera. There is so much ahead. Here we come, Spookala. And we have made it to the west side of Ocala to the World Equestrian Center once again. And we have signage, Spookala Expo Hall 1, the same place it has been the last couple of times. And I will put a link to this website below if you wanna follow along for Spookala. I forgot that Ron Perlman will be here too. So many celebrity guests here at Spookala today. And we have parked and I can already tell you Spookala is super packed. We've never parked by Stable K. I'll tell you what, that's the most horrific text message I have ever received, just the letter K. Do you agree? Horrific. No horses in here, but we're cutting through Horse Stable K. And we have made it to Spookala in Expo Center 1. A large building. Everything is inside one big open barn. They normally have horse shows and equine stuff happening inside here, but today it's a horror convention. I like this venue too. Love it, wait till you see it, if you haven't before. And the local ghost heads have arrived. Somebody get me the Ghostbusters. You can't have a spooky convention without the Ghostbusters. And Chris the Girl has secured our tickets in that phone of yours. How much yep. were they? 4250 each. $42.50 each for this Spook Alice Saturday. You guys are a part of our first 2,500 guests. Oh, look at that. So you'll each get a card. And then these are Garbage stamp cards. Kids. If you make a purchase with the vendors on the floor, they can stamp your card, and if you fill it up, you can redeem it for a free gift at the Oh, Spookala. that's cool. Cool, awesome. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And we have entered. Look at this. Oh, it feels so good in here. I got my wristband. We got a little pamphlet here. Shows you some of the celebrities. If you take a screenshot, it'll last longer. Hey, Alice in Wonderland cosplay. All right, I'm looking forward to so much stuff today, especially the cosplay and the panels. Also, there's the man right there, Deej. The owner of Spookala. Right there, right when we walk in the door. All right, here we go, much ahead. June 9th through 11th, today is the 10th. Spookala. And a nice little photo opportunity right here with a spooky ghost. Gotta take advantage. And look, and look how humongous this place is. The celebrities are on that end, vendors in the center, Several aisles and all the way down there is the stage where the panels and the concerts go down. A large area to move around. Oh my gosh. Michael's right there. Staring into our souls. I just saw you last night, Michael. I've never seen him quite 
Hey, Michael. I've never seen you place your knife in your pocket like that before. Yeah. I kind of like it. His, yeah. his hands sometimes don't work. His hands yeah, don't work? Oh, okay. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's just taking a break. He's just taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are cool. You got Halloween. Of course, you got Halloween yeah. 3 today because the cast is, is here. Halloween 3 as well. Oh, I like that one. You designed that? Yeah, I designed that. That's I designed sick. This. I designed oh, the this Friday the Thirteenth. Well. I like that with I all the Jason. This one as well, with the different colors, the, the ghost face. Where can they find this stuff? Uh, you can actually find it on our Etsy store. Right there. Yeah. If you take a screenshot, it'll last longer. Did you get it? I really like this shirt here with all the masks. Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> well, anyways, hi. My name is Sarah. Um, I, if you don't me, if you don't know me, uh, I'm cosplaying Mick from Idle Hands. Nice. Idle Hands. Idle Hands. I love it. Stars Seth Green, uh, Elden Hansen, Elden Hansen who is here, and then Devin Sawa. Reanimated nerd. So we got some professional cosplayers in the house. This is awesome. Check them out. Oh, you got a QR code there and everything. You said you're playing Elvira tomorrow, yes, like right on the card. I know. All right, Spookala. Oh, we got a little Halloween and Scream going on here. Look at this facade they've made. This is cool. This looks just like uh, Michael Myers' house. And look at this, babe. We're back at the Myers' house in South Pasadena. Although that's not Michael right there. I think so. What'd you do with Michael? I do say, you are in excellent shape, though. Excellent shape. I think Michael came home the night he came home. Okay, now I'm scared. All right, just get it done with. Oh, here I go. Talk about Dream Team Leatherface here too. I love that you have the hammer. That's like one of my favorite scenes when he hits him in the head over the door. He just like falls down and his legs just like twitch. You, can you do that to me? Go. Oh! They're twitching, they're twitching, they're twitching, they're twitching. Okay, that actually kind of hurt. I'm scared, babe. Help me, help me. Okay, this might be the best photo opportunity yet. It's the theater scene from Gremlins. We got three Gremlins, oh, four Gremlins. We even got the hooded one here with the theater seats. These look like they actually came from a movie theater. All right, everyone be quiet. The movie's about to start. Who's gotta get the popcorn? Make sure I get the juice from these two. And I think we walked in at the right time. Little Michael Myers group over here. Oh, we got Leatherface in the window. I gotta introduce you to a friend. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, Myers. Ah! <laughs> we just saw you. We saw you down in Charlie's. Yes, we did. Where's Molly? Wait till you meet Molly. Molly's at the booth. She'll be right here in a little bit. <laughs> oh, he lost his chin. Oh, that's so crazy. Look at that. Or did you did you stick your tongue out at me? He's like, yes, I did. Oh, right there. Oh, look at that. They have Jason Voorhees shaped pretzels over here at the concession stand. How, how much are those going for? Nine dollars. Nine dollars? Oh, his, his eye popped out. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we have met up with some really great friends and they brought a really cool gift. Look at this, it's a raised unicorn pop. That's adorable. Where, where did you get that? We got it at uh, Cultosaurus in St. Pete. It's a Cultosaurus really, really cool in St. Pete? Cultosaurus. I like uh, it. We're in the middle of like a concert right now. Amanda Rosablot, Brad, Oddball Explorations. He's got a channel, check it out. Thank you so much for the gifts. Spookala, all about friends galore. I like it. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And on stage right now, down there, performing Wage War. And stopping by to check out the official Spookala merchandise. Some sick posters here with characters, actors who are here today. As we saw when we walked in, and several t-shirts. I like this t-shirt up here. It's got all of the characters or actors that are here today. Oh, also the actress, the young lady who played Megan is here. There you go, there's a close up. Mankind is here, Mick Foley. I forget, wow, this is, this is amazing. So we're gonna buy t-shirts. We're gonna get this one for Chris the girl, and then I'm gonna get this one. This one was 30, and this one's 10 bucks. It's just got the logo. You like that one? 
All right, we're buying stuff. That is gonna be 40. 40 bucks, all right, you take card? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay, we said we were gonna shop, and what do we do? The first booth we see, we buy stuff. We had to get a Smooth Gallon t-shirt. They were good prices, so. 10 bucks, mine was 30. <laughs> there's a whole world of Spookala and there's a world of Micah. I like the hat. Thanks, man. You got that on opening day, right? Yeah, it's spring training. Oh, no, it's spring it's training. With you. Yeah, that's right. Hey. World of Micah here for Spookala. It's our third time Spookala together. I knew you guys Tag team in it. I was looking for the Tampa Bay hat. It's a dead giveaway, isn't it? That's it. Dead giveaway. Raise up. Raise up. And I also want to talk about your friend Mikey over here. Hey. And you guys starting a podcast. Monster Cab. Uh, Check out their podcast. Focus. Focus. There you go. There it is. Right there. There it is. Check out Monster Cab. It. It's going right. to be great. It's going to be huge. Big things are coming, Tampa J. Watch your head. You killed me. It's a creep show reference. That is creepy. Look at this cosplay. Holy cow. This is good. Are you here to kill me? Oh, no. Spook cow. Look at that. If you take a screenshot, it'll last longer. And we're starting off with some good cosplay, just making our way through. Concert's still going. You killed me. We got corgis in here. Corgis. Spooky corgis. At DOA Company. And will you look at this. On the 30th anniversary, we've got a Jurassic Park Jeep parked here at Spookala. It's a little jacked up. It's got a lift kit. I like that they have the uh, East Dock sign, too. Look at this. I'm wearing uh, the correct t-shirt. June 11th, 1993. If you're watching this video, that is today. This is June the 10th. But if you're watching this, the video came out on June 11th, the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. Very cool. As seen on YouTube, look at this. Legendary muscle. Jurassic Park Jeep. It's a little taller and also this is a, a 95, but it is the same body style. It's got the square headlamps. You got some gas for the Jeep in there? I don't think that's for the Jeep, is it? No, it's, is it for me? Oh, it tastes like, it tastes like Kool-Aid. And now that the stage is cleared out, you can see what's going on here. This is where all the panels that we will be going to today will be located right here on the stage, on the south side of the stadium. And Ghostface is getting assisted by my fiance right now. All right, Ghostface, you ready to give your best, best stab at it? Oh, look, Gizmo's back at Spookala. I remember him last time. Come on. Look at, watch out, Chris. Here he comes, see if he can make it through the legs. Got it, yeah! Oh my gosh, look at this cosplay. Art, have you got, oh, wow! Okay, this might this might be the best one I've seen today. Art the Cloud. Even got the Idahoan mashed potatoes. That is creepy. Art the Cloud. Oh my gosh, you can see right through. I like those glasses. So creepy. And these folks didn't come far from the farm Kirby Family Farm Scary Train. One of my favorite haunted attractions in all of Florida. Say hello to Daryl for me. I like this vibe. It's like a 1920s vibe. Check him out. This is some great cosplay. Who did your makeup? That's amazing. You did it yourselves? Wow. Kirby Family Farm always out doing it. I love it. And we have Annabelle and the Nun. Oh, I like that nice. smile. Yeah, very creepy. I like that is it. one of the creepiest characters. Yeah. It's good to see you both again. Yeah, we saw you yeah. a, a, a little Spooky while ago. Empire, I think it was Spooky right? Empire. Yeah, Spooky Empire, I remember. Yeah, very cool. Some great cosplay. We'll have a good food color. Look at that. Okay. I, I would say that's probably food coloring, if I had to guess. Is it blood or did the chevrons like I'm going to say it's blood. <laughs> and the panels have the gut. What panel is this? Conjuring. The Conjuring, that, when that came out, that movie really scared me. It's probably one of the scariest, mo I would call it modern horror movies. In the last 20 years, I would say it's one of the scariest movies I've seen to come out in the last 20 years, so here we go. Let's get these three ladies on up here. You guys know the universe they're in. These are three ladies from the Conjuring universe. Bonnie Aarons, Samara Lee, Eugenie Bordenrock from the Conjuring universe. Oh, I think there might be another special guest this week. Mike. 
didn't scare me was the surprise when I actually saw the film at the end. And I don't want to give a spoiler if you've not seen Conjuring 3, but the very end part of my character, the production director threw in a surprise that I didn't, I was not aware, which I was not aware. And I'm watching the film and all of a sudden I go, ah! Uh, my name is Douglas Tate, and I played the werewolf in Annabelle Comes Home. So, again, if you guys have any questions for any of the four of them up here on the stage, go on ahead and get to the mic and see. Thank you on cue, I appreciate this. So, what is your name? Uh, my and name you, is Shelby. And Shelby, who is your question for? What is your question? All of you. Have you ever had any paranormal experiences while filming on set? Ooh, that's a good one. On my set, no, but our set was blessed by a bishop. So pre-filming, it was about blessed by a bishop. And then when I went to go film the uh, chunk, I was in Conjuring 3, by the way, if anybody doesn't know that, um, I played Isla. And my set was blessed by the same bishop. So I escaped that. Nintendo Jason Voorhees. Wow. I like those shoes. They match with everything else, even your axe. Do you even swing it like in the video game? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of got that, yeah, that little move right there. That's sick. Yeah. All right, I knew it was Johnny Bronto the it whole time. Like Scooby Doo. Yeah, like Scooby Doo. He got us earlier. Haunt scene. I was shouting out your podcast and that we were gonna be on it soon. We saw Melissa. She was the ghost face killer. She's a ghost face. Having fun at Spookala? I am. I am. I'm amazing cosplays. Everybody's having a good time. These love this place. So yeah. Ditto. Yeah, conjuring right there. We're just checking that out. Johnny Bronto. Dude, there's a Sasquatch over there. An animal encounters. It's a skunk ape. He exists, I believe. And we have made it all the way to the other end. Celebrity Row. All the way across the wall. We got Ron Perlman over here, Seth Green, Mick Foley, Mankind. Although many of the celebrities aren't there at their booths. They're all the way down here at the end. There's a few over here as well. Along this side and the other side of that red curtain. All celebrities. We've also got Jake Busey over here, Elton Henson, Jack Osborne. Also the Hardy Boys are here. This is their booth here. Not here right now. Eugene Bondurant, Samara Lee, and also Douglas Tate are all on the other side of the event center. There's the video right there. We were just checking them out at the Conjuring panel. This is their booth if you want to see them. There's the nun right there. Bonnie Aarons, that is the nun. She said that she chipped her tooth the other day in the panel we were just at. Ouch. Ooh. And not here right now, but I just had to show Mick Foley's booth. He's here signing autographs. Man, I remember those cage match. I remember this cage match with him and M Mankind and The Undertaker. Oh man, that was legendary. Mick Foley. Oh, Freddie wants me to help take a picture. Okay, anything for Freddie. I'll, I'll help you. Got the all-star crew there. You killed me. Oh, creep show. Creep show. Spookala. It's amazing. Right underneath the Spookala banner, Jack Osborne. Ozzy Osborne's son, right there. Signing autographs. It's incredible. Jack. And later we'll see Tom Atkins at the Halloween 3 panel. He is here, right here in his booth, signing autographs. Also, Tom in the fall. All right, Chris found the cool booth. Check out these rugs. There's more right here. I'm really digging this one. Yeah, I know. I think this one. We could have a horror themed bathroom. We That's are. We are moving, and yeah. we need rugs. Yeah, we do. Actually, we do. We need rugs. Which one will it be? I like this design of the t-shirt, too. Spooky Kid Studios is the one making these rugs. I might like this Jason a little bit more. He's more of like a part three or part four Jason. And we're gonna try to catch the end of the ItCast panel. Oh yeah, we'll get there. But first, we gotta stop in and say hello to an old friend. Yeah. This is nuts, right? Yeah. Spookala. 
Spook Caller rocks, man. We love it. I'm even wearing my Spook Caller shirt. I, I love it. You always have the appropriate. I try, I try my best. I yeah. Best. The algorithm has found me, so it's all good. So. No introduction needed, but I will do it. Mark Muncy, Carrie Schultz, our great friends, erieflorida.com. Yep, yep. Traveling everywhere, been living vicariously through your Instagram, we live your, you guys, so your, works out too, your so. podcast, Erie Travels. I, I have a present for you all. Oh, look at that. So, yeah, I've been excited for this, so film away, film away. Okay. This is from our good friend Primo Cardellini over there. Uh, this is an OG for you all. Oh my gosh. Right, I don't know what to on. say. I'm already. I'm already so thankful. All right, hold on. This is for when you have your creature feature. Oh my gosh. So, for today's no. creature so what feature. So you do is when you guys are watching your movie, whatever you're watching that week, you pop that right there. Oh my gosh. And so that I got you a Coupe de Ville, the St. Pete movie you didn't know was filmed here. So right, we were talking about yeah, that. I, I was an extra in that. So. <laughs> With Patrick Dempsey and Daniel yeah, Stern, yeah, and and Alan Arkin and uh, Joseph Bologna. I mean, come on, these are names that nobody on YouTube knows. But we <laughs> talk about so, a creature but, feature. But and, and, and he signed it for you. Oh, oh that is so, so nice, so, man. So I mean, it's gonna eat up your your your, your table space. But Dude. you put that next to your TV, and that way. I've always wanted something like that. Yeah, there you go. No, that's awesome. It's awesome. Spooky, spooky season for you all. So, yeah. so, so, so happy you. Halloween. Happy <laughs> Halloween. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Make sure you check them out. If you don't have one of these books, I have all these books. You're missing out. Erie Appalachia, Freaky Florida, Erie Florida, Creepy Florida, and good old Pinky there. <laughs> and also check out the illustrations by Carrie Schultz. They are awesome. That's Pinky right That's there, Pinky isn't it? There. Yeah, see? Look at exact that. I, pick, yeah. I picked up the right one. <laughs> And eerietravels.com, the podcast. I was listening to an episode the other day. So, are you happy with your role? I'm very happy. <laughs> yes, I'm very I'm happy with my role, my role in life, my role in the movie. No, yeah, I think it was perfect casting. I think no one could have done these roles like everybody played the roles. And as actors, we audition for a lot of different characters. I know a lot of y'all look for different people. And like, I couldn't imagine anyone else playing. No one could do what Jack did. Or I could do what Jeremy did there, you know. So yeah, I'm happy. Very happy. All right, good stuff. Thanks a lot there, Jason. All right, next up, what's your name? Who's the question for? What's the question? Hello, my name is Charles. It's kind of long, guys. Did you ever get the sick on set that you need to bottom line? Blue quick, sick. Yeah, I got hives on my face once because of some dumb dumb get one to put something on my face. Like, I should know if it was a dumb dumb. I think I should have been me. I think I put like something on here in my face. <laughs> like glycerin, like vegetable glycerin. You know, the sound like. Bubbly. So yeah, but also that's why I had a double headed double because I had to do something else, like it's like a unit thing. No, thank God. No. I was never sick enough that I needed to have a double, but I was really, really sick the day I had to kiss Sophia. Sorry, Sophia. Uh, but that was actually when Ben Perkins was like yelling at me and I was like, I can't do it, like I don't want to do his because I had to scream a lot for this evil stuff in my throat for really bad and he was like, you can either like half-ass it today and be mad at your for the rest of your life or you can suck it up and you can do it and be happy with it and like go through a little bit of suffering and just go through it. So like, that was awesome. There you go, the cast it it panel. I thought you would be over at the it panel, but you no, you're the you're the Tim Curry Pennywise. Oh my gosh. You don't know how many times you've haunted my dreams. Pennywise the dancing clown. <laughs> they all float down there. They all float. This is cool too. The Halloween three season of the witch panel is coming up too. We're here with our friends Brad and Amanda. I like that mask, Brad. Mary, where'd you get that? 13X Studios? Oh, Rick's here. I, oh, I haven't seen Rick yet. I have, right. to, I have to go to pay him attention. And we're tired. <laughs> Long day. Looking beautiful. Always looking beautiful. It looks like Brad got to meet Tim Jacobs, yep. illustrator of Goosebumps. This is amazing. He signed it right there. Yeah, yeah. Look Tim at Jacobs is here. That's right. My old old partner. Man, the haunted mask. Do you remember the haunted mask? That was like one of my favorites. Exactly. I really think that, I I love the books, but I really think the combination, the illustration of Tim Jacobs yep. and R.L. Stein, I think that's that ultimately just what sold the books. The match made in hell. 
Match made in hell. That's right. Elementary <laughs> elementary school appropriate hell. That's right. That's right. Goosebumps. That's right. And I see Tom Atkins with Sean Clark, our friend over here, pours Hallowed Ground coming on stage for the Halloween 3 panel. Actually, Sean's back there. We're going to say hi to him later. Are you guys having fun at Spookala today? Or what? Let me hear you guys make some noise! Yeah! Woo! Woo! All right. We got a great panel coming up right now. This is going to be a fun one here. Coming up on the stage from Halloween 3, you got Stacey Nelkin, Tom Atkins, Tommy Lee Wallace, and the guy with one of the coolest names ever, Dick Warlock. Come on, let's, let's make some noise. Absolutely not. <laughs> I would do it exactly the same as I did it back then. I don't, I don't care what the norms are now as opposed to then. Uh, we made the movie when we made it, and it, I thought it worked pretty good. It's a good film. It still holds up. It's fun to watch. And we all had a great time doing it. We're just actors. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Tommy wrote a wonderful script, so 
We were happy. Yeah. And it was a job. Somebody invited me to do a job and star in the movie, so I was thrilled. So Tommy, what was the challenge like for you writing Halloween 3, knowing, hey, I, oh, I get to write a Halloween movie, I get to write 3, oh, but I get to write that doesn't even have anything to do with the first one, or the first two. Um, did you enjoy being able to try and take that offshoot, or were you like, man, I really wanted to have the, uh, you know, have, have the guy, have the mask, have, have, have the shape in my movie? Well, as most everybody here probably already understands, the credit went to me as writer, but it's a bogus credit. There are three writers on Halloween 3, a script, the, the original script was commissioned uh, for Nigel Neal to write, and he did a great job, it was an interesting script. It was a little bit locked in a peculiar time period because Nigel was truly one of the geniuses of British television, especially in the 1950s. And unfortunately, the script, although it was brilliant in places, it felt like a 1950s British television psychodrama. And so uh, John Carpenter did a pass, uncredited, and then I did a pass after that, rewriting John. And uh, ultimately, Nigel was not happy with what we came up with, and he dropped his name off. John traditionally doesn't put his name on a, a script he writes in that capacity, as in this case, he was one of the producers. So there you have a bogus credit, and uh, the idea of writing it was not something that, uh, I, I was hired on to direct the movie. The <laughs> rewriting of the movie was a chore. Not a, not a gig. Uh, it was a necessity, and I had to do it real fast. Uh, but John and I both had some ideas that we thought would uh, make it more palatable for a U.S. audience. And uh, that's the evolution of the script. Uh, I thought we did pretty well. I, I've written a book that uh, just came out last fall, which you can get on Amazon, and uh, if you come by my table, you can see it. Uh, and it explains in great detail about the ins and outs of, of writing that script. Uh, and I'm proud of it, but it has a few flaws in it, which we can go into later. So, your character at the end of the movie is shown to be an android. Do you believe that the real character of Ellie survived and she was elsewhere? Or or do you think that that actually was her? Because there's no real explanation. Oh, very interesting. So that means if she really did survive, if we did a sequel, I could be in it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, uh, because, uh, no, I kind of thought that she, that was it. Lost my head, lost my arm. Lost my possibility to be in the sequel, so. You never know. He's, he's over here really smiling. He's, uh, and they're smiling because they're like, you never know because there's all these androids. That's Where are the rest of the bodies at? You never Great know. point. Great point. Silver Shackrock. Incessantly, the commercial was on constantly, and I remember every single friend had to have one of these cookies books. It was like if you didn't have that costume, you were a loser. And it was either a bat, a witch, a goblin, and it was always like it's the orange, the green, the black, the same look of the you know the certain silver shamrock hats, the heads, the masks, and the same goofy ad. And it was like when the movie came out, all I could think of was like. I never bought a cookie spook costume ever in my life. And I was wondering if you knew about that costume and if you used any of that ad campaign concept in the movie. Was this a regional thing and where did where were all over the United States? It was everywhere. And a lot of people don't remember it, but I remember because I wanted one at the time. And then the movie came out and I was like, I don't want one anymore. <laughs> I can I can honestly say I've never heard of it before. 
However, it's very possible Nigel Neal knew about it and worked with it, uh, worked it into the story. That's possible. Yeah, because if you look it up, it's Spooky Spook spelled with a K, and it's just, it's the same, the, the tune and everything, yeah. and just constant commercials, and it was like, it was so connected with that. That's why I enjoyed the movie so much, and I and I told my son about it, and he was like, it's very similar in some way. All right, just, I always wanted to know. You know, I've uh, been written and presented, and uh, we had gone out looking for support for a movie called Season of the Witch. The odds would have been against it. It was automatically getting made if it was called Halloween 3. And to me, the only colossal mistake we made was not advertising it properly. Still great movie. Thank you. So before we go to the next question, so what do you think was the, uh, you said that the advertising, you don't think was advertised properly. What would you have changed in the, the advertising for the movie to hopefully make it have a better critical reception? It, it, the table needed to be set. You have Halloween, and then you have a true sequel with a Roman numeral after it called Halloween 2, starring The Shape, Jamie Lee Curtis, etc. Now you come out, Halloween with a Roman numeral three, and you're not going to explain that, hey, you know what? We're going to try something completely different this year, and it's going to lead to an anthology that goes on forever with a different Halloween theme every year. That's a brilliant idea, but because there was already a Halloween two, we set up a false expectation. Nobody at Universal thought of that. The producers didn't think of it. I didn't think of it. The advertising department didn't think of it. it. This was totally stupid. You know, the ads were intriguing, but uh, they were also ambiguous as to the content. And way up in the corner, this little tiny ribbon said, all new. Like, what is that? <laughs> all new. Of course it's all new. Uh, so we didn't do a good job of setting the table, and uh, we paid for it. Uh, it's just unbelievable that 40 years later, and sort of this is an answer to an earlier question, it, it's gone the extremes. Uh, we figured, we, made, we knew we'd made a good movie, and we thought it would go out and do a good movie's business, meaning at least as good as Halloween 2. Um, but we created our own backlash, which is the subtitle of my book, uh, Where the Hell is Michael Myers? <laughs> That was the remark in the theaters at the time by many, many people who went expecting something different. And uh, so the contrast, it was perceived, although it actually did really well uh, in its first few weekends, it was perceived as some sort of failure. And it has gone in 40 years to being this unbelievable phenomenon. Tommy is right. Uh, every day somebody's walking by today with a purse that has a television set with the magic pumpkin in there and it's like, wow, I want one of those. Yeah, what have you. And when I got finished with the movie, I got a call from Deborah Hill. You all know who she is, right? Great lady. Oh, she wanted me to coordinate uh, this little movie they were doing. So I went over to her office, met her. She, I hadn't seen Halloween, so I had no idea about that series or the, the thing. She explained it to me and said, this guy wears a mask, he gets a little nuts and goes So she said, I want you to go down the hall and meet the director. So, am I boring you yet? Oh, no, no, absolutely I went down, I get, not I get at all. The, 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 the office prior to his office. And I look in there and on the desk, and that's all that was there, a desk, a chair, and the mask. So I picked the mask up. I put the mask on, and I walk to his door, and I stand there and look at him. I just stared, and he said, who are you? <laughs> I said, who the hell are you? And I started laughing, and I took the mask off. I introduced myself at a distance, and then walked over to his desk. We had our meeting, and he said, yeah, I don't care if you will. Oh, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. As I took the leave, I had the mask in my hand, I turned back to him and I, I said, is there any reason I can't play this guy? He looked me up and down and he says, I don't care, Deborah doesn't care. I didn't realize I 
six foot Nick Castle had just done that guy. Anyway, uh, he said, no, I don't care. So I walked down the hallway and I said, listen, Rick doesn't care if I play him. What do you think? She says, I don't care as long as he agrees. So that's how I got that job. You know, that was different than, than the assassin. I, I'm still not sure how I got the job as the android guy in this movie. Uh, unless it was him, I, I'm not... <laughs> Now he knows. <laughs> they're, they're totally different guys, but yet they're the same. You know, they don't speak, they just kill people. You know, and it was a whole lot like us. But uh, I got the credit, and uh, really I shouldn't be here with these, with these fine people. Because I'm not in their league or their caliber at all. But I'm very grateful for you folks for inviting me along for the ride with the rest of them. So thank you very much. So... We're doing a pretty low budget movie there, although it was a giant budget next to the original Halloween. Yeah. I think we had two and a half million dollars. That's great. But that doesn't go very far when your movie is more ambitious as Halloween 3 was, with the masks and the factory and the da 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 da. Uh, it's a little different than one guy chasing some people around with a knife. Uh, more ambitious, so Deborah was watching the pennies very closely. She had already gotten acquainted with Don Post, the mask maker, on Halloween 2. Uh, they, uh, they used some of my masks and they also manufactured, Don Post made one. I spoke to him on the phone about this, so there's a lot of controversy and confusion over which mask was used when and so forth. Uh, he declares he made some, so I assume they were kind of interchanged according to the scene or whatever. Anyway, point being, Deborah knew about Don, and so she first turned to him. The skull was already on his shelf as an existing mask. The queen, a uh, queen, uh, the witch was in the works uh, before we came along. It was something he'd been thinking about because Don had thought about expanding his line and getting a little bit bigger and more ambitious. So this represented, our movie represented a kind of, uh, you know, uh, synergistic opportunity for him, win-win. Uh, and Deborah very cleverly said, all right, let's make a deal. Uh, the masks, you make us some masks and you can have the rights to the masks after the fact if we can have them all for free. Good deal all the way around. Yeah. That's really great producing. So, uh, in the end, uh, I immediately said, uh, skull mask for sure, how about that witch mask, and let's come up with one of our own, we could afford that, to design, to design from uh, scratch, and that's where the pumpkin came from. Okay. Thank you so much. And then my favorite science fiction film was 1951, uh, The Big That one. <laughs> old one. Yeah, they, I love that one. What did you say? I can't hear you. Are you ready for this next panelist? Come on, let's bring it up, Mr. Seth Reed! Seth Reed. What's up? There we go. All right, don't you love it? So, we have a live mic in the front. People can line up to be able to uh, ask you questions. Sweet. So that we can uh, pretty much just uh, Perfect. Do Ready. Whatever they want. And you know what? Here we go. These guys do not even want to wait. They're like, I don't care. Everybody's, we got the, look, this is the moment. They're like, yeah, we, want, we don't care about you, but you guys want to talk about We want our questions answered. Now we want them right now. Hey, what's up? So what do you think? You want to get guys? Let's do it. Hi, my name is Charlie, and I was wondering if there was a role you got, uh, you got it, but you decided to decline it, or was there a role you wished you declined that you accepted? Okay, that sounds like two good questions. Yeah, first of all, uh, you know, work is usually work, so when you get a job, you're like, oh, thanks for that job. You're not, you're not often like, I don't know, that job. Um, so, no, there hasn't been 
has it been, if I ever pass on something, it's because I don't think I can do the best job. I'm not like I'm not right for this, or or I don't want to. I don't want to have that experience. But I also take jobs that you know don't pay anything because this guy's shooting it or this person's starring it or whatever. I like to do the stuff that seems like it's going to be the best version of the thing that I like to do. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you, Charlie. So how about this? We're going to take that question, Charlie, and we'll just play it a little differently. Okay. Is there a role that you got in? Once you got the role and you got into it, you're like, whoa, this is not what I thought it was going to be when I accepted it. I'm really going to have to stretch to make this thing what they uh, what they wanted. Not really, but um, I did... Uh, <laughs> this is very silly. So I know the uh, comic book writer Jeff Lowe okay. uh, did like uh, Long Halloween and the Red Hulk and at one point this is more than 10 years ago he was taking over um, some of the uh, narrative content from Marvel television he wound up producing stuff like Daredevil but at this point they were just doing animated stuff and so he, he says to me hey man we're going to do an animated thing do you want to play um, uh, uh, Abel do you want to play the abomination? And I was like, oh yeah, cool. And so I did. For the pilot, not knowing, I thought it was a, a short, like a movie, so the, the one time, and then they go, great, the show got picked up for 50, 56 episodes. <laughs> and so I wound up doing nearly 60 episodes of Hulk and the Agents of Smash. Love it. No regrets. I love it. I got to be a bomb, but I also was like, I'm sorry, it's one. Like, it's gonna be a two day commitment every week for the next five years. I was like, oh, jeez. So, I that was more than I expected when I signed up. Hey. All right, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name is Amanda. First, uh, thank you for being a great panel host today. And thank you to our ASL interpreter. You're doing amazing. Thank you so much. I haven't even, I haven't even tried to stump you yet. <laughs> Don't make her say bad words. It's a I won't. Word. I'll just like get a little more ducks in harmony to see how fast your skills are. Hey, I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will tell you something really funny though about, about Sarah real quick. So this is actually a good little story that happened. So uh, we did the panel a couple panels ago and we were going like a thousand miles an hour. Yes. And we got off the stage and I said, did you sprain your hand or into your hand? And she was like, I actually stabbed myself in what my thumb and my finger because I was trying to go so fast. So yes, I did. Oh my God. <laughs> this is Sarah over here, everybody. So let's give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good job, man. Now that we've gone through all these other tangents, yep. back to you. Uh, well, the, the first time that I met you around was around San Diego Comic Con 10 years ago. Sure, where now. I lived for nearly 20 years. Yeah. E exactly, but you know, thank you. You're always a sweetheart. Uh, so my question is, oh, there's a little bit of feedback. Uh, so uh, two soundtracks from uh, the 90s, Can't Hardly Wait and Idle Hands, I yep. would say, are absolute bangers. There's, yep. they're nice little bits all the time. Uh, my question would be, what movie soundtrack, whether it was a movie you were a part yep. of? that you've heard as a fan, do you just play on repeat? Sure, I love movie soundtracks. I love legitimate needle drop music that is appropriate for a film and becomes as a collection, like your own mixtape related to that movie. I love that James Gunn really revived the concept of a needle drop movie soundtrack and made it like a mixtape. Um, the f my first favorite movie soundtrack is Purple Rain. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this masterpiece of a movie starring the absolute legend Prince. Uh, the film's phenomenal, the soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks I've made. And then I like stuff like um, Stand By Me or Lost Boys or like good stuff that had a bunch of brand new music on it. Um, but I'm even into like the Tangerine Dream 3 o'clock high soundtrack. Like, 3 o'clock high, wow. Um, I love music. We, uh, I, made a, I got to make a movie in Thailand and really emphasized all my effort around the soundtrack. We put out a vinyl, but there's only like 500 pieces, so. But it has both the score and all of our uh, needle drum music. So, What's your favorite? Oh, uh, 
Idol Pan soundtrack is just amazing, but if you're feeling particularly emo, because I was in high school around that time, it's got to be the Can't Hardly Wait soundtrack. I mean, come on. We launched a lot of bands in this group. That's a fragrance of love, said a candle beat. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, oh, actually, an incredible piece of real uh, trivia. The prop master who built my backpack for Can't Hardly Wait went on to make all of the props for Marvel. Oh, wow. That's cool. I made see you, Thor's Lord. hammer and the Infinity Gauntlet. Same guy. It all started with a love pack. I love see that. what I'm saying? It's great. Thank you very much. My pleasure. There's so Thank many so much. unique panels going on. I really love the Halloween 3. Also, Seth Green's hilarious. The It cast. See some of those, uh, some of those guys. And what was the first one we did? Oh, the Conjuring. To see the Nun. Wow. And now we're having Seattle's best coffee in Florida. We are exhausted. We are exhausted. Yeah, we've been up it's all been night. Thrilling. We've been having a great time here. But we, uh, when you have a lack of sleep, you have a lack of sleep. <laughs> I was up all night filming a horror movie. Dude, I think it died. It literally died. And Seth Green is on stage. Beep, beep, Richie. Beep, beep, Richie. And we come back down to Celebrity Row. Seth Green's still on stage back at the other end of the expo hall, passing by the Halloween 3 cast. We just saw them on stage. Chuck E. Cheese has showed up to Spookala. I think he's actually from the local Chuck E. Cheese. Funny story. Well, we'll go into Corey Feldman later. Chris the girl. Are you ready for your close-up? It's coming, it's coming, it's coming! It's Look at that beautiful coming. smile. Always gotta be ready for the close-up. <laughs> I always hit record. Yeah, you can, you, well, you can say anything you want in this video. I won't edit you out. Okay. Don't want to talk shit. What? Sean Clark, Hi. our good friend. We've been chatting it up, what, like yeah, 20 been, minutes over here? Talking shop over here. Taking yeah. your time away from you. You're a busy yeah. man. Yeah, you're running my job over here. Yeah. Trying to do a good job. You, you always do a good me. job. Speaking of good jobs, we were talking about uh, future filming location pro projects coming out. Yeah. One that you dropped today. Well, one that I tried to drop today, but it got a copyright. Yeah. Today. Hopefully it'll be up by Monday. I hate when that happens. It's a yeah. bummer. The fly. David Cronenberg's The Fly. Yes, okay. it'll be my next Horrors Hall Grounds. All right, yep. so check it out. Also, um, did you mention, have you mentioned that you're gonna be dropping any of those other ones? I've mentioned that uh, American Psycho is Okay, you got American Psycho. Yeah, yeah we just missed you in New York by two days. Yeah, yeah, I was just Adam and the I. last few locations from that. Um, and uh, so that'll be the one after The Fly will be American Psycho. And that one was quite a project. A lot of locations, a lot. And you go, you go all out, dude. You get, you get all access all the time. Deep, man. I went deep. Yeah. All right, so check yeah, him I out. I grease palms if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> Do what it takes. You know. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting those out. Um, hopefully, a new episode with Thing with Two Heads will be coming out soon. I, I know we were talking about having Tom Holland on as a special guest. That would be great. Director of. Uh, Child's Play, Fright Night, writer of The Beast Within, class of 1984, one of my personal favorites. Um, yeah, so hopefully he's going to be on our next episode. And if you haven't seen, I just dropped a collection video a couple days ago for uh, the Lost Boys jackets I acquired. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that episode drop. Yeah, yeah man. That's, uh, that one's getting some good traction. So. And cool. I finally just hit 40,000 subscribers, which was Congratulations, really cool. buddy. Yeah. yeah. Happened this weekend. That was, you know, a nice little milestone. I'm, I won't be satisfied until I get the, the plaque. Until I get the 100 I think it's 100K, right? You get I the need plaque. That. All right. Plaque. So come on, guys. Get on there. Malfunction. Yeah. Poor Hallow. I always tongue twist Horrors Hallowed Grounds. I know. It's a, it was a Horrors. No, it's a great day, man. It's just too hard to say. <laughs> hey, look, it's Deej. The hey, Deej. Of the of the, uh, of the Deej right here. Look at this, man. Hey, this is a great convention. Why are you trying to take Thank you, man. I haven't gotten to sign it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> How about Dick Warlock sign it? <laughs> He's the one that's on it. The shape. Look, he still walks the same. Look. Oh, wow. That's the walk. Yep, there it is. That's amazing. That's the that's wow. the that's the shape walk. Right yeah, it's there. right there. You, 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 
what? Oh, there's the other. That's Having a, a good time that's, here. That's a shape. There's a shape, shape in, in costume over there. There's Michael. I think Michael Myers is easily like the, the most popular costume. Okay, now we're cutting through the vendor aisles. So many booths in here. Trying to find a certain one though. So much spooky stuff for sale. We're feeling high at Spookala. Rick, my co-star. Hello. My you friend. shot your scene for the movie that we're gonna be in last weekend. Yes. I did it last night. How did your uh, scene go? My, my scene went fantastic. I feel I really killed it. I ended up losing 45 pounds in a week for my part, so that should be great. Yeah, then I, I just gained it back, but uh, so, so I really, I'm a method actor. Did, how, what'd you do for I'm your part? I'm a method actor. Yes. You can ask Chris. I, I like Googled everything, how to be okay. a good actor. Yeah. I was watching some Brando. I was also watching uh, a, a lot of, you know, a lot of good actors just trying to get in the role, but ultimately, <laughs> It's a freaking terror fire selfie guy! Right Dude. here, guys! Oh my god! Guy. It's, right here. it's a freaking Terrifier guy! guy. This guy right here! Selfie guy! Terror fire 2! You <laughs> shitting me right now? Dude! Uh, right here! This guy! Right here! Oh my god. Um, is there security around some <laughs> color right now? <laughs> security. There's security coming! <laughs> Camera's in your face, bro. What are you gonna do? No. Vlogging, bro! Take a screenshot. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Right. What do we got? So, welcome to Spookala. It's your first Spookala. How's it going? This is my first Spookala, and I want to tell you it's been fantastic so far. Um, one room, and it's really it's 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 been awesome. Uh, I know they have live music on, and the air conditions freezing, um, crowded, slanging a lot of mass. So I'm having a great time, seeing a lot of friends. So yeah, it's been really cool. So good. Yeah. Good. So a lot of mass business has been good. Yeah, it has. It has. It's 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 been really cool. I I, I do want to say I uh, I unfortunately I, I I like drinking. I like drinking at conventions. And in seven years, I've drank at every single convention I've been at. I'm not an alcoholic, just for the conventions. <laughs> but I want to say that uh, I was a little under the weather coming into the show, and I didn't drink this whole weekend. So I have had a sober spookala. Wow. So and I'm feeling pretty amazing right now. So. Good. Yeah. Well, good for you, for you. buddy. Yeah. So you'll say you'll come back? I will definitely be back. Yeah, I'm having a really good time though. They did a really good job here and, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future of Spookala. Alright, next next Spookala will be in Tampa. Tampa. Kevin Smith in the house. That's right, they signed Kevin. Yep. Clerks, man. I do. Are you going to be? I do mass for Kevin Smith. I make Silent Bob and Jay Mass. You can go to jayandsilentbob.com and my mass are there. And yes, Kevin dressed me for Terrifier 2 with my movies outfit. Yeah. That's right. Selfie yes. guy. Yes. All right, brother. Guys. And we'll be seeing you. No spoilers, but we'll be seeing you soon. Yes. yes Not good. in Florida. Right. Can I say one more thing really quick? Yeah. yeah. Um, so as Jay walked in the booth, I already got him booked for another movie we're going to do together. Okay, so you got me booked for my first role. Yes. And now my second. I walk in yes. and uh, Wanda yes. was Wanda. like, hey, you want to be in my movie? And I'm like, sure, I just did yes. one last night. So yes. here we go. Here Round we go two. Again, the brothers. Yeah. And then we're going to do a Tampa Jay selfie guy yes. Vegas movie. Vegas? <laughs> yes. Vegas. Yep. Yes. I like it. We're going to Vegas. Yep. Are you coming too, Chris? Uh, I don't know. Am I? And it's going to be G-rated, no hookers, and no cocaine. G-rated. For your custom hockey masks. 13X Studios. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Hardy. This is another Jerry. Uh, had a little too, too much to drink one night, and he uh, got this, this weird arrangement. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was on the phone like all day trying to figure out these lyrics. What I do like write songs is like I'm translating what the music is telling me to write. And that's why I, I think that's why I love it so much. And what's so cool is like anybody else could listen to it and translate what the music said to them will be could be completely different. And that's what I love about the, the possibilities of melody and harmony and just uh, yeah. But I was I was obsessed with finishing the song and it ended up being like a love song, a love song about my wife and it's called. Dreaming in love. So it's a run on the love rings.
day here at Spook Cow at 6.30. Covered a lot of ground. And we had to go back and see Mark Muncy and pick up the present he gave us earlier. Here it is in my bag. But here is where it was made. Creature Feature. And I want to thank, I want to thank Primo. Hello. Very much, because Mark Muncy sent me over. He, he oh. got one of the Creature Feature reels for me. Ah, I see you found it. And I want to say it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is amazing. This is what this is like one of the most underrated movies of all time, Falling Down. It's so good. You got Michael Douglas there with the Uzi. You painted that. What is that on? Oh, that's a film reel. It's a film can. It's a can. Right. Um, I've been doing a lot. If all of those are there, are smaller film cans. Oh wow. Oh, you got Pink Panther. Yeah. Oh, these are cool. I have a lot. I like that I feel freedom with those. I treat I treat the little seven inches as sketches. Okay. I go in down and dirty, I do a nice little, you know, original painting, and I spray it with enamel, and there you go. Forty dollar original art, you know, throw it in a bag and, and walk away. I like it. Man. Cardinali's Carnival Occult. Primo Gardinali. That was the booth that made this creature feature real. And we have made it back to stable K. Would you say we've circled K? We circled all the way around K. That's my girl. That was my joke. Oh, it's a Tampa J joke. I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna marry her. <laughs> Alrighty, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up right down there and subscribe below if it was your first time. I hope you enjoyed our experience at Spookala. I had a great time. Chris the girl, you? Always have a great time. We got to see friends, hang out. Mm -hmm. A lot of cool uh, people today we got to say hello to. So thank you all for uh, everything. Thank you for tagging along with our experience here at another horror convention. I really look forward to the next one. Again, Spookala. Dot com down in the website down in the down I'm tired in the description in the below. description below I'll thank you below. I love you babe thank you for helping me out but uh my battery's dying I only brought three and batteries and it's raining and it's raining so we're gonna make That's this short day. know you're awesome know you're loved no matter who you are what you're going through know that you're loved you know there's always much ahead okay that's it the rain's that's picking it. up and yep. uh we gotta go home yep here we come Bella all right guys see you next time love you can't thank you enough Bye-bye. All right, let's get in the car. It's raining.